Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Building a Better South. Yes, we're here in Glenview, Kentucky, uh, not too far from our personal home. Yeah, here. Blackberry Hill Road, and yes. hopefully you guys aren't still sleeping from last week's episode. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of designer <laughs> elements to it, so I, I'm just here for moral support today. Well, and again, you got to have a solid foundation to put all that pretty stuff in. That's so right. We walked you through the footings last week. Now today we're setting up the walls. So I'm going to take you, show you a little bit about what goes into the wall, the rebar, how it supports a big two-story house that uh, you make so beautiful at the end of the day. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Let's let's go show you a little bit. Uh, let's go this way, and we'll show you. Got my handy prop. You know, you never. That's know. your pointer. That's what he uses That's to right. point. <laughs> So we're walking through, which will be kind of the driveway area here. Mm -hmm. We've got these cool decorative kind of wing walls on this side of the garage here, and then this side of the garage here on my right. So this will be the driveway. Gretchen will be driving, uh, you know, whatever. Through my here. Wagoneer. Wagoneer, there we go. Uh, but you guys can see, we had to elevate the garage up. This is a five foot wall right here. So the way this lot was graded, it was lower here. So five foot wall, we'll actually fill that all with gravel. We prefer gravel over dirt so you won't get any settling. You know, if you do dirt, it rains, you'll get like a 30% compaction. So it's gonna settle over time. This way, solid with rock. Yeah. And if you guys, you can peek in to this wall here. We've got number four rebar running all the way around this. It actually ties down into the footer rebar that we showed you last week. We'll go around the backside and you can get a better view of that. So do they rate the rebar based on numbers? Is That's four, right. Is four really strong? <laughs> it's not a 10 like you, but uh, it's pretty strong. <laughs> all right. That's only a four. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to walk around the back side here. So you guys visualize that this will be a nice driveway area that hopefully will landscape out on either side so that a three-car garage on this side and a two-car garage on this side. Yeah, so plenty of garages. This one's actually going to be set up to be like a, you know, a multi-purpose garage, put a basketball goal in there. So we still get those nice cold winters here in Kentucky. Oh, we do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although we're hottest record in September, in September. ever recorded. Yeah. 90s. So started right. today at like 50. Now we're up to 80. So about yeah. time to lose the sweatshirt. Uh, but as you guys come around the corner, eventually we'll have some type of retaining wall around here. We're waiting on the landscape architect to kind of give us his recommendation mm -hmm. on how to transition from up here, because this will all be built up for the driveway. And then we'll put a wall and do a nice set of steps down to the backyard. So we so chose- So it's a walkout basement, just yep. to remind people. Yeah, and we chose not to do a set of steps from the second floor porch down to the backyard, mainly because this, whole three stories would be full of windows and we didn't want the view to be obstructed with the staircase or the deer to feel like they could come up through the back <laughs> steps into the house so we didn't want to encourage that yeah so you'll have a little side porch entry steps will come down here and let's see if we can stumble our way into the basement yeah All right, we made it into the basement. Yeah, just walked around the side of the house. <laughs> All right, so give you guys just perspective. Behind us is the back side of the house. That's the walkout section. And we've got brick going all across the back of this house. So the guys, when they pour these walls, we're going with a 10 inch thick wall, but we've got to have what's called a brick drop. This will make more sense once the forms are pulled off, but we create these little two by four forms. We set them down in the hole so that way once the concrete is poured down in here and they take the forms off, we've got an actual ledge that our brick will sit on. Nice. And it, 
What's that? I said nice. I never realized that. Oh. <laughs> I've seen it, but I never knew that that was what well, helped form it. Every market's a little bit different. We don't ever show our exposed concrete walls once we grade everything out, right? I do so, notice that. So we set our brick, we can set that brick below grade so we can raise the brick up, backfill against it, still get water to go through a weep hole above the dirt, but it's this brick ledge that allows us to do that. A lot of places you'll see brick hitting the concrete and then you see the whole concrete foundation. No bueno. Not, an artist. Not, a, not a fan. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, so it, again, takes a little bit more time, a little bit more, you know, effort to get it, but that's what that brick ledge is and how we create it, so. And we're all about the pretty at yeah, Artisan. That's right, so as you're rolling through and looking down in there, notice the, the rebar, like I said, we have that rebar in there. We've actually tied it in to the rebar that came out, out of the footer you saw at last week's episode where we had that little candy cane looking piece of rebar. So mm -hmm. the guys actually drop these forms in with a crane down here. So the guys a lot of times don't have to hoist them in. But uh, so we got a short wall here for the walkout. Right. And then you'll see as we pan around, let's go around this way a little bit. So this basement has a combination of 10 foot walls and 12 foot walls. So what you're seeing right here, we're gonna have a little two foot wall. So we'll actually be standing in the main level of the basement. And then there'll be two steps down into the golf simulator. Got my handy trusty golf club here. Uh, or so, sports room, or right? Sports you room. Said you can yeah. throw football. Multi-purpose. Yeah, multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Uh, so that'll be in right here. So this has 12 foot walls. So you see those giant walls right there, 12 foot. So that's why we went up to a 10 inch thick wall. Normally we could go maybe eight inch, but we wanted a little bit more support going that tall with the, uh, and we alluded to the, the safe room or the, you know, the concrete shelter or whatever as the panic room. Yeah. So let's go do a little disappearing act and we'll see if you guys can find us. <laughs> Ooh, this is where the moms can go and hide. That's right. That's, that's a great invention. <laughs> put, uh, you can put a little wine dispenser in here for your friends, come over. Yeah. I'll, I'll let ladies do the honor. Oh, thank you. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's kind of so, fun to, to walk through a doorway. So you get a sense of the, the thickness of this. Mm -hmm. Again, not just a prop. This, this <laughs> wall with forms and all is about 18 inches thick. So wow. those forms would be about four inches thick. So four and four leaves you 10. Uh, so we're actually underneath the porch right now. So concrete on this wall, concrete here, concrete here. The guys are just starting to form up this wall. This will actually get built all the way up and this will be a solid uh, concrete, we'll have a concrete lid on it too. So you, you can come down you can here hide and yell and, and no scream. One, no one would find you. Mom, mom, mom. <laughs> That's right. And I want to show you guys one other thing too. These are double formed concrete walls, which is what most guys build their basements out of this, this day. But I want to show you how that's possible. And it all started when we started excavating the basement. So we're actually going to go on the outside of this wall by walking around. And we'll kind of show how we do it now versus how they used to do it years ago. So join us. Right. I'm sure most of the guys don't. You do smell awfully good today. I mean, that's probably not a, a it's really word tight. spoken very often on the construction site. So, oh, hey guys, I didn't know we were still filming. Um, no, what I wanted to show was so this is a double form foundation wall. So back in the day, we used to not we, but I guess this was before my time. They would dig the side of the basement. We would form up one side and they would pour the concrete directly down and it would rest up against the dirt. So a lot of times, you know, if people have expanded these old houses built 20, 30 years ago, it's a single form wall. So sometimes you can't add a second story on because there's not enough weight or substance or a solid wall to do that. So we usually over dig, it's called an over dig, about three feet. So it gives our foundation guys, River City, a chance to walk in and out set the form, they've got to tie them all in, and it just 
it really makes it workable and, you know. So then they come back and they backfill. Yeah, so we'll pull these forms off and then backfill. Right. So, but until we pull them off, I think the guys are scheduled tomorrow to bring the bump, pump truck. I think we got a little over 100 yards of concrete that's gonna go in these walls. And one of the cool things as we walk out, you can kind of see, sometimes the earth will tell a little bit of a story. So usually the top, you know, six, eight inches is topsoil. You know, this has been backfilled over time. So you see some tree roots or mulch that was in here. So this was the existing grade. And sometimes it's hard to see as you go down the dirt, it changes color a little bit. And then this is all solid Kentucky red clay here. So sometimes these developments we're building on as lots become harder and harder to find in our market and probably your all's markets too. A lot of times developers, site guys, will move a lot of dirt around. And when you're digging out, you don't know if you're on solid soil or not. So it's good to have a quality expert who knows the right dirt that you're setting your foundation on so it doesn't move. So we've unfortunately been in situations where you get unstable soil, you've got to excavate it all the way out, fill it back in with rock, and then have a solid uh, surface to build on. So, all right, awesome. not to bore you all with more details, but. I thought we were looking for dinosaur bones. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a couple <laughs> fossils in there. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, hopefully a little bit of information that you guys can use and, you know, it's our goal, if, if you're a client of Artisan or, or not. Or a just, future client. Or a future client. <laughs> it's just to educate you and know that, you know, there is more to go into a house than just, you know, just, just the studs. Just the pretty. Then, then and I stayed awake this entire episode, so. <laughs> well, and that's what, I don't, I've lost track. We've done a couple hundred of these custom homes over the years, and it's, you learn a lot by trial and error, and we, you, you know, have honed it down to a, a perfect science. Fine tuning or, our, our yeah. craft every day, and I'm still learning. So, and that's the joy of doing what we do is every house is different, every site is different, and there's always different obstacles that we have to overcome. Right. So, all right, I guess until next time, enjoy the pour of this beautiful foundation. See the concrete go in. We'll get that set up and then hopefully be back uh, in a few weeks to, to show the, uh, the foundation. Yeah, and you can find me on Instagram. I'm Gretchen Black. And I'm Jason Black with Artisan Signature Homes and together we're building, building a, a better, better South. South.